we play with a gamepad, eh? I will play with a gamepad. Gamepad. Yeah. Why not? Galiteo, I already told you I stopped watching football when I stopped betting and that, that was like 7-8 years ago. I haven't watched football at all. The only thing that I watch is basketball. NBA mostly. That's about it. Everything from sports that I watch. Maybe from time to time I'll, I'll watch tennis when Djokovic plays and that's it. is loud man I really loud Voice assist. Voice voice assist speed. Voice of high contrast. W slash A S slash D. E. J chip. Bot four. Reset to high master volume resolution. Language. Better with voice assist than me to read everything there is. You gay. Stylized fonts. Easy read or stylized. We always stylized. It looks better. Yes. No. Let's see if Obsidian can redeem themselves. If they're dead or not. Since Pillars, they haven't released a freaking good game. That's a long time now, five years since Pillars. Everything they released was garbage in the meantime.
player says and the abbot said to me, Andreas. Option 1 of 3 I don't want you distracting the sisters in the library. Option 2 of 3 I need you to finish this commission by the end of April. Option 3 of 3 keep your conversations with brother Piero to a minimum. Beatrice says brother Piero is such a source of wisdom and encouragement for you, though. Socrates says indeed, but the rule of the Christian contemplative life demands that the brothers not engage in idle chatter. Saint Grobian says Jesus Christ, what a pack of dull arts. Be happy you're only stuck there for a few more months, Andreas. Presto John says how did you reply to the abbot, Andreas. Option 1 of 3 I apologized and said I'd avoid unnecessary conversations in the future. Option 2 of 3 I replied that the rule was for him, not for me. I'm an artist, not a monk. Option 3 of 3 I just nodded and kept working. Option 2 of 3 I rep Saint Grobian says and thank Christ for that, H A Ha. Socrates says his calling is to God, yours is to your labor and the illumination that it brings. Beatrice says it's the abbot's house, so everyone has to play by his rules, or rather, the rule. Presto John says despite the abbot's ire, you must endure. Soon you will have finished both the abbot's work as well as your masterpiece. And then you will return to Nuremberg, where marriage and your new life as a master await you. Beatrice says yes, marriage to someone he has never met. Hardly ideal. Socrates says well, the alternative is becoming a philosopher. Saint Grobian says oh, Jesus, then you should definitely get married. Is she pretty? At least. Option 1 of 3 that's what my brother said in his letter, but maybe he's just trying to lift my spirits. O option 3, Presto John says it is growing late. The will of time stops for no man, Andreas. I fear you must leave us. Player says ah, true, your majesty. Presto John says will you visit us again soon, option 1 of 3 hopefully, but it's out of my control, your majesty. Option 2 of 3, Presto John says I will pray for your safety and a swift return. Grobian, please see Andrea safely home, Saint Grobian says of course, your majesty. Presto John says until next time, Andreas, player says until next time, your majesty. Saint Grobian says pay no mind to the other fools, Andreas. Player says I never do. Ah. At least I would if they'd stop stepping on my feet. Watch where you're going. Saint Grobian says he he. They're fools. Andreas. No point in trying to teach them anything. I know old John wants you to endure the abbot's shit, but since I take you home, I get the last word. Don't let him run you rag, boy. Option 1 of 3 I won't. The abbot can't push me around. Op option 3 of Saint Grobian says that's no way to think about it. You need to stand up for yourself. Player says go. Would you please ST? I give up. Take me home, Grobian. Saint Grobian says he he. As you wish, Andreas.
the game really needs voice acting to read. To, to read all of this is way too freaking much. And to have it like this, it's freaking irritating. So, both doesn't work for the game. Reading or... Or having this voice cover. They're equally bad. The game, it just, even though it can be good, it loses immersion, okay? I don't even know why they released this without voice acting. It's not like Obsidian doesn't have money for voice acting. Ursula says go along. And do her. Player says time to get up. The Baron. 1580. Quests. Go to bed. T Bone, thanks for the 16 months, T Bone. K Matter Hello. Only 13 people worked as a side project. I get it, okay, and I, I can tell that few people worked on a game, but when you make games like this, adventures, old school adventures, the first thing that you should have in mind is voice acting. Voice acting is like the most important thing, it's a 90% of the game. If vo voice acting is good, then the story is good also. Journal. Maps. People. Glowy room. People. Maps. It's done well, though. I like it. Really nice art style. Really, really nice. It looks great. Very, very nice UI. Journal. And you start working at a scriptorium. Player says I really should clean this up. Go to bed. Gerdner House. Ursula says Andrew PPPBBT. Andrew PPPBBT. Ursula. Gerdner Guest Room. Clara. Clara says good morning, Andreas. Did you sleep well? Option 1 of 3, quite well actually. Thank you. Clara says oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Anyway, I know you'll be off to the Abbey, so I packed you some food, almonds, cheese, and some of the rye you like from the Albans. Otto wanted me to ask you to join him for dinner at the Abbey. Eva says Otto stopped by. Clara says yes, around done. Here you are, Andreas. Option one of two that's too kind of you, Clara. Many thanks. Clara says Master Andreas, if it wouldn't be too much trouble could I? I mean, could we? Would it be too much trouble if you paid next month's rent today? And if we raised it by two Grochan? I hate to ask, but we're behind on our taxes to the Abbey. 
two months behind. Peter's losing his hair over it. Even more than usual, I mean. Option one of four, of course. It's no problem at all. Besides, we wouldn't want Peter to lose any more of his precious hair. Op option three of four, I can't promise anything. Clara says, of course. I understand. I hate to even ask it of you. Our taxes get harder to pay every year. Peter works hard but it just never seems like it's enough. Same story no matter the age. We pay for taxes we don't even know what we're paying for. Saint Luke bless you for helping us out. Speaking of Saint Luke, how is your masterpiece coming along? It's been two months now, hasn't it? Player says slowly, I'm afraid. Most of my days are spent doing work for the Abbey. It's only during the Divine Office that Prior Parank allows me to work on my masterpiece. A reasonable restriction, but slow going. The City Council doesn't require it to become a master. I'm making it mostly to show clients, and for my own sake. And yes, when I do finish, I will go back to Nuremberg, where I will marry and open a workshop of my own. Clara says from Nuremberg to a university and now traveling the world as an artist. What a life you have ahead of you, Master Andreas. Player says yes, I suppose it does feel like I'm starting a new chapter in my life after. Option 1 of 3, a few missteps. Op option 3, Clara says it must be rather frightening, starting all over again. Option 1 of 2, I owe it to my family to make something of my life. Option 2 of 2 it is, but I know now that this is what I want to do. Player says not many people get to decide that. It's a good number. Clara says certainly not anyone in Tassing. Anyway, I don't know anything about art, but I've seen you sketching such beautiful things in your little book. Your masterpiece must be wonderful. Option 1 of 3 it is. It's my finest work. Op option 3. Clara says that's no way to think about it. I'm sure it will be a treasure when it's finished. Now, I have to get back to my own work. Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas, and we'll see you after Vespers for supper. Player says not tonight, but thank you. Klaus Drucker invited me over for supper. Clara says of course. Please say hello to the Druckers for us. Player says of course. Until later, Clara. Gertner Farm. Clara, Eva. Eva says hello, Andreas. Clara, Gertner Farm. Big York says morning, Andreas. Big York. Player says morning, Big York. How's it going? You working today? Big York says just taking a rest for a bit. Dad's still in the field. He hit a big rock with the plow and it took me lord knows how long to pull it out. You off to the abbey? Option 1 of 2 every day but Sunday. Option Big York says damn, Andreas, I don't know. Just making conversation. Smells like a storm's coming, no. Player says huh. Just smells like fresh alpine air to me. Big York says you've been traveling too much. Where was it you spent your wander jar before you came to Tassing? Option 1 of 3 Basel Andreas knows some Italian and French and can reference cultural touchstones from Basel and nearby Bern, Zurich, and Freiburg. Option 2 of 3 Flanders Andreas knows some Dutch and French and can reference cultural touchstones from Antwerp, Bruges, and Ghent. Option 3 of 3 Italy Andreas knows Italian, a little Greek, and can reference cultural touchstones from Florence, Venice, and Milan. But you with it. Player says Italy. Florence for a while, but Venice, and Milan as well. Big York says Italy. No wonder your senses are dull. You've been down there too long. 
Spend enough time in these mountains and you'll be able to smell a storm coming. Player says how long will that take? Big Yurt says MM10, 15 years. Player says I don't think I have that long, Big Yurt. Big Yurt says what did you spend all that time in Italy doing, anyway, other than art, I mean, option 1 of 5 hedonist Andrea seeks out pleasure wherever he goes. He is extremely social and quite experienced in all of the enjoyable vices of the world. Option 2 of 5 Craftsman Andreas lives to work and dedicates all of his time to his art. Option 3 of 5 Bookworm Andreas spends all of his non-working free time finding and reading as many books as he possibly can. Option 4 of 5 Raph Scallion Andreas has a penchant for getting involved in petty schemes, pranks, minor crimes, and fist fights. Option 5 of 5 Businessman Andreas devotes much of his time to self-promotion, Optimizing business expenses, making investments, and balancing his books. Shit, the fuck I tell you. We're gonna take Rob Skelly and I believe it's gonna be funny with this. For getting involved in petty player says getting into trouble. I got involved in a scheme or two. A bit of mischief. More than a few brawls. Street fighting is a sort of pastime on the Italian peninsula. Just a little fun, really. Big Yurk says sounds like a strange way to pass the time. Andreas, anyway, I have to get going. Peter says Jurg. Let's go. Big Jurg says Dad's already acting like I'm taking too long even though I did all the work to get that rock out. See you later, Andreas. Player says until later. Big Jurg. Big Jurg says hey, Andreas. You say hello to the girls today? Player says Eva and a glossary. What is this now? Eva and Claire. Big York says no, I mean the chickens. Peter, James, and John. They like it when you stroke their back or give them a good scratch under the breast. Player says you named your chickens after the apostles? Isn't that blasphemy? Big Yurk says I guess when you put it plain like that, but I hear about the apostles every Sunday in Mass. They witnessed Jesus' greatest moments of glory and his darkest trials. And I was thinking, that's how it is with the girls and me. They see everything I deal with around here. Option 1 of 2 that makes perfect sense to me, Big Yurg. You have much in common with Christ. Option 2 of 2 word of advice, don't mention that, Big Yurg says it's fine, I get it. I'll just call them the girls from now on. Player says I don't recall your family eating eggs. What do you do with all of them? Big Yurg says oh, we sell them to the Bowers. Clara says we need the extra money for taxes, anyway. I should get back to it. Until later, Andreas. Player says until then. Big Yurg. Yurg, Peter. Peter says Andreas. Hill Peter. Hill Peter says God bless you, ah. Player says. Andreas. Hill Peter says ah. Yes, Andreas, this weather's been god awful. This town's gone to shit since my days. Option 1 of 2 I don't think the townsfolk can do much about the weather. Option, Hill Peter says as different as beer and piss. The old abbot didn't bother us much about our customs. He didn't mind if we left a little offering to Prichta to keep the skies clear, the weather fair. Matthias knew that Christ was in our hearts even if the white lady's name was on our lips. Option 1 of 4 The church banned all observances of pagan gods, Il Peter. O option 4 of 4 You think that spirits have been fouling the weather since no one follows the customs anymore, Il Peter says had. Sharper than you look, at. The saints weren't the first to watch over Tassing. 
My father knew that. Old Ranag Kemper knew that. That bastard abbot may not like it, but some of us keep the traditions alive. Option 1 of 3 like the old widow, Adilia. Option 2 of 3 I will. Option 3 of 3 Ill Peter says when you get up in the night to take a piss, go around the right side of the house, and never go back the same way. That way the witches don't steal your soul. Option 1 of 2 of. How? Int Ill Peter says cough cough. Player says I should go. Ill Peter says hmm. Alright. God bless you. I really wish the game was fully voice acted, man. Would be ten times better. Diesel. Let's go. Can we? No. Ill Peter. Peter. Gertner House, Big Yurt, Town Commons. Entry says hello, Andreas. Gertner Farm. Player says Entry's Schmidt Smithy. It's so much smaller than the one he uses at the Abbey. Gertner, Gertner Farm. Veronica says, Martin, please, can you give me a hand here? Martin says, what do you want? I'm keeping an eye on them. Veronica says, that looks a lot like standing there and doing nothing. Hetty says, Martin, for Christ's sake, help your cousin. Veronica says, ah, morning Andreas. Excuse us. One of the fence rails fell and the sheep started hopping it. Option 1 of 3 is there something I can do to hell? O option 3, Martin says mind your own business, asshole. Veronica says Martin. That's enough. And Andreas, leave the discipline to my mother. Hetty says oh, look. There's something going on up at the Steinauer's place. Martin says who's that on the horse? Looks rich. Hetty says I don't know, Martin, but Lucky is giving him an earful. Christ, I haven't seen Lucky that worked up since Peter and Clara's wedding when you unfold his pants down. Knock two of my man's teeth out. You don't want to feel the strength behind a stonemason's anger. Martin says do you think he's a noble? He looks really rich. Hetty says god damn it, Martin. Stay out of trouble for once. Martin says what, and Hetty. Veronica says behave yourself. Don't we have enough to deal with right now? Hetty says Andreas, if you wouldn't mind moving your skinny little body up the road. We need to get these sheep under control. Player says of course. See you later. Option 1 of 3 don't work too hard. Mar option 2 of option 3 of 3 help your end and op option 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 1 Martin says head. Mark heading. Veronica. Church and Druckers. Uh, yes, it's linear right now. Till the game opens up a bit. Drucker House. Claus says, Morning, Andreas. How's it going? What was that? Player says, Morning, Claus. Another day at the Abbey, another few hours to work on my masterpiece. It's Klaus, it's Klaus! Klaus says, good to hear. You still coming by for supper tonight? Marie and Bert would love to see you. You really need to see these new woodcuts I have for an Italian edition of Till You Lens Be 
Player says I didn't realize Father Thomas let you print books in Italian. Claus says come on, Andreas, he's not that strict. I know he's just trying to protect people from Option 1 of 4 heresy Option 2 of 4 witch mania Claus says oh, god, don't say that, Andreas We're less than a day's ride from Innsbruck No need to get people around here all worked up about witches again Besides, don't talk about witches around Father Thomas just a bad idea. Player says good to know. Claus says so. Supper tonight, after Vespers. Option 1 of 2, of course. Claus says great. I'll tell Marie and Bert you're coming. See you then. Player says see you later. Claus. Drucker house. Claus. Thomas says God bless, Master Mailer. I hope your week is going well. Option 1 of 2 thank you, father. It's going quite well. I'm just on my way up the hill to get to work. Thomas says good, good. Andreas, I don't recall seeing you at Sunday morning mass. You understand how important it is for your salvation that you receive Holy Communion, don't you? Option 1 of 3 I, yes. I apologize. Father Thomas. I promise you I'll make it this Sunday. Op option 3. Thomas says Andreas, do you think I like saying these silly things to people to get them to come to CH? Oh, my. What a blessed day to receive such an illustrious visitor. Master Mailer, this is Lawrence. Baron of Rothvogel, a great lord from the countryside near Worms. Lorenz says good to see you, Father Thomas. It is nice to be remembered fondly. I only wish all of your neighbors were as welcoming. Thomas says well, yes. What brings you back to our little town? Lorenz says my wife and I were returning from a trip to Venice. We spent a few days in Innsbruck and it was terribly dull. I mean, it has a certain charm common to these alpine cities, but the place was crawling with nobles for the emperor's diet. Thomas says the emperor. Was he there? Did you see him? Lorenz says oh, briefly, but he was sitting for a portrait at the time. Quite lovely. I didn't want to bother him or the painter. Option 1 of 4 who was the artist, my lord. Op option 3 of 4 how was Venice? my lord. I lived there only a few years ago. Lorenz says oh, fascinating. Well, the city's Jews now live in their own quarter in the north. The city's artists are still producing wonderful work. Titian, in particular, is a god. No offense, father. Thomas says of course. Lorenz says anyway, my wife wanted to stay a bit longer in Innsbruck and I decided to ride ahead to make a visit to Kiersaw. I heard Father Matthias died shortly after my last visit, of course. Thomas says a great loss for the Abbey and for us all. Lorenz says indeed. By good fortune, I recently came across a copy of the Historia Tasha he was reading during my last visit. Father Matthias was hoping to find a second copy to corroborate the contents of the first. It contains some fascinating details about the history of this place. I'm afraid they might even cause a bit of a scandal, Pat. Man, if I was reading all of that text since the game started, I would already end the stream. Because I would get tired. Insta-tired after an hour. It's insane. It needs voice act. Thomas says, ah, oh, yes. And even though it's irritating with this, it's easier than to read. 15 times easier. For those that watch and for me that play. Fuck yeah. Lorenz says but I must be off. There will be time enough to discuss Tassing's past later. 
I commissioned a manuscript from the Abbey through Father Jernot and I have come to check on its progress. Thomas says oh. My lord, if you have come to see your manuscript, you should speak with young master Mailer here. Option 1 of 2 not quite a true master yet. I still have to marry and be approved by our city council. Thomas says Andreas is a journeyman artist from Nuremberg. For the next few months, he's also helping in the Abbey Scriptorium. Lorenz says a Nuremberger artist working in an Abbey Scriptorium. In 1518? Oh, we should talk, Andreas. I must know the story. Option 1 of 3, of course my lord. It would be an honor. Op option 3 of 3, Lorenz says I have yet to judge the quality of your entertainment, though it sounds like we're off to a bad start. Thank you for the introduction, Father Thomas. Come to supper at the Abbey tonight. I'm inviting you to the abbot's table, Thomas says is. Did the abbot invite me? Lorenz says oh, don't worry about it, father. Just show up after vespers. What is he going to do, refuse us, Thomas says I. Lorenz says excellent. We will see you then. My claws, I'm dismounting. Run ahead of us and take the horses to the Abbey's guest house. I'd like to take my time talking with Master Mailer. I'll meet you there, Mike Law says at once, my lord. Lorenz says so then, a journeyman from Nuremberg. I love the art style though, it looks amazing. Forgive me for saying so but you seem a little old to not yet be a master. Are you on merit? Player says no, I'm not married, but in truth I came to my vocation later than my father and brothers. I was in university for a number of years, at Erfurt. Lorenz says Erfurt. Wonderful. The same university as Martin Luther. Have you read his works? Tremendous mind. He says things about the church that should have been said years ago. Might get him into trouble, but he's a brave, brilliant man. Wait, you may have even met him. Did you? You must tell me, player says ah, no. He was a few years ahead of me. Option 1 of 2 still, his ideas do seem fat. Option 2 of 2 his ideas don't hold much interest from. Option 1 of Lorenz says I agree, wholeheartedly. I simply must meet him if I get the chance. I wonder if the good brothers of the Abbey have heard of him. Perhaps they have even read his list of 95 theses against the church. Father Matthias was not above having a lively debate. I hope Father Jernot does not disappoint in that regard. But enough about Luther for now. Tell me about your university studies. Option 1 of 2 forgive me, Baron, but did you attend university? You seem very well educated. Option 2 of 2, Option 1, Lorenz says ha. Huh. No. My family is merely wealthy enough to have provided me with all of the books and tutors a child could dream of. I love all knowledge, from Aristotle, and Cicero to Pacino and Erasmus, and everyone in between and yet to come. Player says I may have misjudged the Baron. It seems he is as well read as any university student, Lorenz says in truth. I am simply happy to speak with another well-educated man. Now then, did you earn your doctorate? Player says I know, I didn't. Only a master's degree. I started working toward a doctorate, but didn't finish. Lorenz says oh, that's a shame. Well, what was your area of study? Option 1 of 3 Theology Andreas has a strong understanding of Catholic theology, biblical knowledge, canon law, heresies, and similar subjects. Option 2 of 3 Imperial law Andreas knows the basics of the fractured systems of laws that govern the various states of the Holy Roman Empire. Option 3 of 3 Medicine Andreas is familiar with the basics of human biology, medicine, and illness. 
Option 2 of 3 Imperial Law Andreas knows the basics of the fractured systems of laws that govern. Option 1 of 3 Theology Andreas has a strong understanding of Catholic theology, Biblical. Option 2 of 3 Imperial Law Andreas knows with the Imperial basics law. of the fractured systems of law. Player says law. I suppose I thought I could practice in Nuremberg. Lorenz says I never had much interest in the subject, honestly. A bit dull for my tastes. Besides, the empire is such a mess of jurisdictions. Bavarian law, Rhenish law, Franconian law. Nonsense. I'd rather use my money to pay someone who studied the nonsense than learn it myself. Ottilia says you. If I had any faith I would have prayed you'd never show your face here again. Curse you, Lawrence Rothvogel. Purchased dogs tearing you to pieces would be too kind of faith. Lawrence says these rustic communities display a shocking lack of hospitality, don't you think? Option 1 of 2 what was that about? Lawrence says who knows? By the time I finish guessing, the old crone will probably be dead. This is the first call it joke since the game started. Well, what of your early time in university? Every student must study the trivium and quadrivium, yes. Did you have a favorite subject? Option 1 of 5 Latinist Andreas has a strong command of Latin grammar and vocabulary. He can also easily recall sententiae antiqui, quoted words of wisdom from the Roman Republic and Empire. Option 2 of 5 Logician Andreas instinctively thinks through the implications of information as he receives it, is adept at spatial analysis, and can easily perform complicated calculations in his head. Option 3 of 5 Orator Andreas excelled at rhetoric in university. He is a skilled teacher, persuader, and public speaker. Option 4 of 5 Occultist Andreas knows a soul endangering amount of theoretical and practical knowledge on alchemy, astrology, theurgy, necromancy, and various magical rites and ceremonies. Option 5 of 5 Heavens and Earth Andreas knows a great deal about the constellations, heavenly bodies, and their movement. He is also familiar with various plants and animals from study and personal experience. Gonna go with the right. Option 3 of 5 Orator Andreas excelled at rhetoric in university. He is a skilled teacher. Persuade, I, I hope it's gonna speaker. be useful along the way. Player says the art of persuasion, naturally. Rhetoric. Lorenz says ah. Uh, I assume you studied the Greeks and Romans both. Player says yes, Aristotle and Cicero, of course, but also Christian thinkers like Augustine and Thomas Aquinas. Lorenz says true, we have less use for public discourse than senators did in the Roman Republic. Funny thing how when I played Expeditions Rome, Cicero, when it was voice covered, they called him Kikero. And here they say Cicero. So who the fuck is right? Player says exactly. The doctors of the church weren't trying to persuade politicians, but to move the mind toward Christian truth. Still, the principles remain the same. Invent your arguments, then arrange, style, and internalize them before delivering them to your audience. Lorenz says splendid, though I suppose an artist has little use for rhetoric, especially in a place such as this. Player says not true. Rhetoric is also an art. And like other forms of art, it should be created for the audience and its purpose. It can be practiced as easily in the streets of a rural town as in the Curia of Rome. Lorenz says well put. And your other studies? Was there anything else you excelled at? Option 1 of 4 Latinist Andreas has a strong command of Latin grammar and vocabulary. Option 2 of 4 Logician Andreas instinctively thinks through the implications of information as he receives it, is adept at spatial analysis. Op option 4 option, op option 1 of 4 Latinist Andreas has a strong command of Latin grammar and vocabulary. He can also eat option 2 of 4 Logician Andreas instinctively no, thinks through player says logic, geometry, and arithmetic. Lorenz says quite interesting for an artist. 
was Aristotle's organon the foundation of your study? Player says yes, the organon for logic and Euclid's elements for geometry, but the past few centuries have yielded wonderful new texts on logic. Peter Abelard provided the foundation of scholastic philosophy and established the primacy of Aristotle's work. The Englishman William of Ockham gave us the Summa Logiki, arguing nominalism against Platonic realism. And of course Thomas Aquinas gave us the tools to employ both faith and reason in the pursuit of truth. Lorentz says all monks and friars, of course. A great deal of work to force Aristotle to fit within the church's vision of truth. Player says is that so wrong? Lorentz says I question that these great men should have had to wrestle logic into what the church established by fiat and force. Ah, there's the abbey. I have good memories of this place, and of Father Matthias. I was sad to hear of his passing. Player says how did you come to know him? How did you come to know of Giersa at all? Lorentz says my family have been patrons of Giersa for, oh I don't know how many generations. Some years ago I heard that Giersa still had a wonderful library and artisans. Professional artists have taken over most manuscript production, so I was shocked to find an active scriptorium here. Option 1 of 3 well, there's not much left of it these days. Two old men, a young scribe, and me. Option 2 of 3 this is as good a place as any to create art, Lorenz says certainly, though I'm sure you miss the comforts of Nuremberg when you're stuck in a drafty old abbey like this. Option 1 of 2 I'll get back there soon enough. I'm in no rush, option 2 of 2 I do, but the abbot is paying good money, good enough to put up with a bit of discomfort, Lorenz says that's good for me since I still appreciate the abbey's work. I commissioned a manuscript through Father Jernot a year ago. I thought I would stop by and check on the progress. Wait, are you the artist working on it? It's a prayer book with 20 illustrations. Player says I know the work, but no. I do know the artist well, the venerable brother Piero. Lorenz says how venerable? Player says he still has his wits and his skills, if that's what concerns you. Brother Piero has an incredible talent with color. Lorenz says then I very much look forward to seeing it. Lorenz says my claws, tend to the horses and the baggage. I'm heading up to the abbey. My claw says yes, my lord. Lorenz says well, let's not keep the abbot waiting any longer. Nuns. Quite unusual for a Benedictine house to have monks and nuns, even if they are separated. The church closed most of them centuries ago. But then, Kiersaw is a place out of time in more ways than one. Option 1 of 3 Do you know Mother Cecilia? She seemed to recognize you. Lorenz says we are acquainted, yes. Let's leave it at that. Ah. You must be Father Jernot. I am Lorenz, Baron of... Jernot says yes, the Baron of Rothvogel. So wonderful to have you here again, we actually did meet on your last visit. Lorenz says ah, if you say so. I am not good with remembering faces. Jernot says please forgive me, my lord, but I wasn't expecting you for another few days. Lorenz says yes, I know, but I rode ahead. I just couldn't wait to see my manuscript. I'm sure it's no trouble. Jernot says we I, yes. I mean, no. It's no trouble. Did you want to see it now? Lorenz says oh, in a moment. I could do with a bit of refreshment, though. May I grab something from the kitchen? Jernot says. Yes, yes. Certainly, my lord. I will meet you there. Andreas. I don't know what you were doing with the Baron, but I need you in the scriptorium, now. Option 1 of 3, of course father. I'm eager to get to work. Option 2 of 3 why are you taking this out on me? He 
he's not my problem. Option 3 of 3, is this a bad time to ask for an advance on my payment for the book that? of hours? Jernot says. R R R R. Player says hmm. I should ask again when he's in a better mood, maybe I could just convince brother Matthew to pay me early. If all else fails, I could liberate some money from the sacristy. <laughs> Holy shit, I can steal. Lower Abbey. Okay. Church. Cloister. Church. Find a way Lower to get Abbey. paid. Shrine. Convent Garden. Man, someone said here that the game is gonna receive cool voice acting and... I'm thinking what to do right now. Should I wait and play the perfect version of this game? Or should I just play it now? Because I believe if it receives voice acting, it's gonna be great. Okay. And I don't know what to do. I know I won't replay the game if I finish it now. With text to speech. I won't play again even if it's voice acted and I would really love to play it voice acted. I don't know what to do. Shrine. Lower Abbey. Shrine. Uh, as far as that with Cicero, I'm telling you in Expeditions Rome it was Kikero. Here it's Cicero. I kinda believe the right way is to say Kikero. Lower Abbey, Church. Church, Lower Abbey, Shrine. Marguerite. Player says Brother Matthew maintains the shrine along with some of the sisters, who paint badges for pilgrims. Margaret Upper Abbey. Player says a reliquary containing the hand of Saint Moritz, which is said to have once held the Holy Lance. Lisbeth, Gertrude. Gertrude says God bless you, Master Mailer. How goes your work in the scriptorium? Option 1 of 2, very well thank you. Gertrude says oh, then I guess you wouldn't be interested in the Saffron Agnes Steinauterin received yesterday. Player says what? Saffron, really? Where'd you hear that? Gertrude says Sister Matilda saw her at the Albans. Maybe you can convince Prior Ferenc to get some for your yellows. Player says hum good to know. How's Moss Fanger? Gertrude says she's around here somewhere, hopefully getting to the baby rabbits before Sister Matilda does. Player says until later, Sister Gertrude. Gertrude says bless you, Andreas. Maybe I'll see you by the shrine of Saint Seisha one of these days. I mean, Jack, hello, Yurion, hello. I'm torn apart with this game. Okay, I, I would play it if it was voice acting. If it's gonna receive full voice acting, I I'm better off with waiting. I'm literally torn apart. I wanna play it, but, but I know there's gonna be a better version now. Are you people sure it's gonna receive full voice acting? Yeah, yeah, I just started. 
an hour into it. An hour, 20 minutes, something like that. That I decided against Callisto Protocol, I ain't paying 60 bucks for the game that's freaking broken. That's lunacy, it has the nuvo. It's gonna work like crap, and I need to stream that game and play it on a graphic card at the same time with those frame drops. That, that's fucking insane. If it doesn't receive voice cover, I'll play it. Okay. If it receives full voice cover, I'll... I'll wait. I'm torn apart, I don't know what to do. Man, I can't find anything. What cat, Yurian? Like we play. Lisbeth. Lisbeth. Lisbeth says, God bless you, Lisbeth. Master Mailer. Upper Abbot Marguerite. Marguerite says, God bless you. Brother Piero. No, wait, it's Master Mailer. Player says, I thought you couldn't see. Sister Marguerite. Marguerite says, During the day, I can see some colors. Player says, How did you know it was me? Marguerite says you and brother Piero both smell of the pigments you use, but you're taller, and you have another smell to you, like fish or burned almonds. Smell like fish. Option one of two oh, that's old linseed oil. Popular among the Italians, but brother Piero doesn't use it. Option two of two, I'm also much more handsome. Yeah, that, that's what you need to say to a blind nun. Marguerite says well. I wouldn't know. God has saved me from the temptations of beautiful men. Player says you'll just have to trust me, then. Marguerite says not a chance. Player says have a good day, Sister Marguerite. Marguerite says God bless you, Master Mailer. Marguerite. Upper Abbey. Lower Abbey. Church. Let's go to the church. church. Monastery Loquarium. Rudger. Cloister. Tower. Crypt. Cloister. Crypt. Tower. Huge church, man. Tower, Crib, Cloist, Rudger. Rudger. Rudger says, God bless you, Andreas. Player says, has your voice yet recovered from Easter Mass, Rudger? Rudger says, oh, yes. It was a bit of a strain, but a worthy sacrifice. Player says, well, if the Lord could give us his all on Easter. I'm not doing those shorts, it's my wife that's doing shorts. It has nothing to do with me. So when you see shorts with cats, dogs, that's all my wife. Rudger says exactly. When you see shorts for games that I can't even find time to do, that's me. Have a good day in the scriptorium. Player says have a good day singing. I wanna chill as much as I can till 7. When the Rogue Trader is out, so I can spend a lot of time doing something with the Rogue Trader. Crib Tower. Dormitory. Old Bailey. Matthew. Matthew says, God bless you, Andreas. Player says, how is the sacristy today? 
Matthew, Matthew says the same as yesterday. Does my vocation seem silly to you? Master Mailer, option one of two no I was just being friendly. Op Matthew says your calling is in the world. Master Mailer, mine is here. Even if you find keeping order in this place foolish, the Lord does not. God be with you. Option one of two one more thing. I have a favor to ask you. Matthew says yes, Andreas. Option one of three I was hoping you could give me my pay for the latest manuscript early. O option you three of three pay. give me my pay. O o Matthew says this isn't part of the agreement you made with Father Jernot. You'll be paid on the completion of each additional manuscript you illuminate, not before. Option one of two I only have a few pages left, Brother Matthew. I'll finish them in the next few days anyway. Matthew says then I think you can wait a few days to collect your wages. This abbey runs through mutual agreements, not haphazard payments. Breaking such contracts would cause undue trouble not only for Gearsa, but for Tassing as well. Okay, we're gonna steal from the church then. Option 1 of 3 the matter is pressing, Brother Matthew. For the love of another Christian, I beg you to make an exception. Option. No, option I can also persuade. Okay, because I I picked persuade. For the love of another Christian, I beg you to make yeah, an exception. Yeah, we always persuade. Matthew says, very well. Do not ask this of me again, Andreas Mailer. Matthew says, here you are. I shall note this with Father Jernot and Prior Ferenc. Player says, thank you, Brother Matthew. Matthew says, hmm, God bless you. Andreas. Sacristy. Player says all right, now that I've got my payment, I can give Clara the rent early. Option one of two I'll give it to her directly to make sure she receives it. Direct. No, the other one is the surprise. Direct. Max. Where am I? I'm in the church. Scriptorium, dormitory, kitchen, cemetery, animal pens, tower, crypt, library, shrine to St. Moritz, garden, monastery, infirmary, guest house, stable. Yersa. Uh, okay. people Matt Old Bailey What's Old Bailey? Dormitory, church, scriptorium, cemetery, scriptorium, prior's house. Player says, what is this? A Volvel? I've seen these before, in astronomy and medical tracts. What's this one for? Two wheels. The top wheel has Greek letters and holes cut out to reveal Latin letters underneath. And the outer edge of the lower wheel is divided into four sections, each bearing an elemental symbol. It looks like the lines between the holes form constellations. I think they do, anyway. Ah, a quarter turn of the upper disc aligns a different elemental symbol with the top of the lower disc. Option 1 of 2 given the number of letters and the size of the discs, there's enough space for a total of four versions of the Latin alphabet. Player says I wonder what it's for. A cipher of some sort, I need to investigate more. This has to be connected to something else around here. Player says I still don't know the significance of the Volvel. It must be used to decipher something, but what? Old Bailey. Old Bailey. You're in a classic adventure, okay? There, there is no cemetery. inventory. 
Cemetery, Scriptorium. Got, Edog, Fierro. Old Bailey. Fierro. Got, Old Bailey. Old, Got. Guy says good day, Andre. Player says how is your morning going, brother Got. Guy says it's fine. More contracts for the abbot. Player says which would you rather be making, contracts, or manuscripts. Guy says I honestly don't care, Andreas. As long as the abbot is impressed, he could have me write the first chapter of Genesis until Judgment Day. Player says does the abbot's opinion mean that much to you? Guy says the abbots and the priors, both, you're lucky. When you're done with this, you're going home. I'm never going to see Burgundy again. I need to make the best of the next 40 years. Player says then I'll leave you to it. 40 years doing Edoc. the same shit. Edoc says God bless you, Andreas. Player says how are you feeling today, brother Edoc. Edoc says Amil. Player says Amil, that's easy. I am well. Edoc says well done, my son. It is early. I will give you a harder one later. Player says I look forward to all of your anagrams, brother Edoc. Edoc says literal nut. Player says, ah, yes. Until then, Edoc. Piero. Piero says Andreas. God bless you. So good to see you. Player says good morning, brother Piero. Good to see you as well. Edoc says I don't like this weather. My bones ache. It means a storm is coming. Player says Big Yurt Gertner says that if you live here 10 or 15 years, you can smell storms coming. Guy says brother Edoc has been here long enough that we can always smell him coming. <laughs> Edoc says do not forget, brother Guy, the fate of the youths who jeered the aged prophet Elisha outside of Bethel. Guy says are you comparing yourself to a prophet, brother Edoc? Edoc says I am comparing you to an impudent youth whom the Lord, in his ineffable wisdom, may choose to strike down. Option 1 of 3 Brother Guy, please show more respect to Brother Edoc. You're being mean-spirited. Option 2 of 3 Calm yourself, Brother Edoc. Option 3 of 3 Say nothing. Player says well, everyone seems quite lively. I suppose that means Prior Ferenc is not overseeing us today. Guy says he was here, but then he heard Lawrence Rothvogel had arrived and he hurried out like a little mouse. Ferenc is so desperate to impress the abbot and nobles like Rothvogel. It's pathetic. Edoc says you feign kindness to Father Abbot and our prior only to speak about them like this behind their backs. It's shameful. Piero says oh, oh no. Baron Rothvogel. His manuscript, I just realized that he will want to see his manuscript. How silly of me. Of course that's why he is visiting. Guy says perhaps if you were younger and faster you wouldn't need to worry so much about patrons visits. Option 1 of 3 what's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait like anyone else. Option 2 of 3 watch your mouth or I'll give you something to worry about. Guy says wh dash. Threatening a monk. What's wrong with you? Player says you're the one mocking old men. What's wrong with you? Anyway, what's the problem? The Baron is just one client. He has to wait like anyone else. Edoc says Andreas, Baron Rothvogel is not like anyone else. He has powerful friends, including the Prince Bishop of Freising. Kiersaw is already, out of favor. Father Abbot does not want to have to deal with more attention. Player says well, if Prior Ferenc isn't here, I'm going to work on my masterpiece until he arrives. Oh, that's right. I need to reference the Indermore manuscript. What? Zedna says what do you want, Andreas? Player says a book. The Indermore Manuscript, the book of ours. Zedna says your hair looks messy today. Did you get enough sleep? Option 1 of 2 could I just get the book? 
Op Zedna says I mean did you sleep alone, or, option 1 of 2 could I just get the book, option 2 of 2 why do you want to know, Zedna says it would be nice to have something to think about during divine reading, option 1 of 2 could I just get the book, <laughs> option 2 of 2 have you considered, have you considered the lord, Zedna says you really are a cloud on a sunny day, Andreas, player says could I just get the book, Zedna says ugh, that's all that way upstairs. Can't you get by without it? Option 1 of 2 I'm sorry, but I really can't. I need to reference option 2 of 2 no. Why are you complaining? Isn't this your job? Zedna says isn't writing books your job? Sister Illuminata. Andreas needs a book and he's being inappropriate with me. Illuminata says Andreas. The Illuminata. <laughs> Option one of two sister Illuminata. I'd like to borrow the Indermore manuscript, the book of ours. Illuminata says yes, I overheard. Here. Please return it promptly. Piero says Andreas, may I see how your masterpiece is coming? Player says of course. Your opinion is always welcome. Piero says yes, the composition is lovely. There is a joyful spirit in your arrangement of the figures. The contrast of colors is also quite nice. Rich and beautiful on their own, but not overpowering the scene. Option 1 of 2. Is that all? Option 2 of 2 it doesn't feel right. I don't know why. Piero says it's an excellent interpretation of someone else's work. Option 1 of 2 what do you mean? It's all my work. Option 2 of 2 that's what clients want. Piero says what do you want? Where are you in this work? Option 1 of 3 I didn't know there was room for me in here. Option 1 of 3 I didn't know there was room for me in here. Piero says it is inescapable. We all put ourselves into our work, whether we realize it or not. What does this painting represent? Player says it's November. Looks like summer to me. In November we show peasants leading the pigs into the forest to forage on acorns before the slaughter. Piero says Andreas, the peasants here are no longer allowed to forage acorns in the forest. Many great lords and abbots across the empire have forbidden it, even Father Jernot. Player says what difference does it make? This is the way November is painted. Piero says but it is not the way November is. Piero says art is illusion, storytelling, but in their most sublime form, these images illuminate a path to truth. Player says it's most important to me that my clients are happy. They won't pay me for truth. Piero says yes, but with God's grace, this book of ours will outlive us all. What will it say to those who see it in a future generation, centuries beyond our comprehension? Some will gaze deep into your lines and pain to seek a deeper meaning. What will they find? But you need not listen to my opinions. They are just the thoughts of one old monk. There is no place for the monastic scriptoria anymore. In truth, this room is a place out of time. Option 1 of 2 does that make you sad? Op Piero says some people, some places, have a difficult time letting go of the past. I am not among them. The creation of books, of art, is no longer the province of monasteries. So be it, more people will be able to write more will be able to read and, in so doing, be brought to truth. Option 1 of 2 Don't you think there's a danger in anyone being able to write, anyone being able to read, anything? Option 2 of 2 I think there will always be a place for artists like you and brother Eduk. Guy says. Option 1 of 2, and bro option 2 of 2 say nothing. Guy says. <laughs> Piero says it's kind of you to say so. Andreas, but you need not be concerned for me. 
I have lived a long life and am happy to have served the Lord. When he calls for me, I am ready. It is already terse. Too much talk. I must ask forgiveness for not honoring the rule. Until later, Andreas. Player says until later. What did you ask him? Illuminata says what's going on in here? They allow me that. Illuminata. Illuminata says Andreas, what was that noise? Player says oh. I'm sorry, Sister Illuminata. I knocked a bowl of paint to the floor, but then Prior Ferenc came in, wrote in one of his books, slammed it closed, and left. He was in such a hurry I don't think he even noticed me. Illuminata says he was slamming books shut. Prior Ferenc should know better than that. Some of these manuscripts are quite delicate. Option 1 of 2 nod. Option 2. Illuminata says I think he is on edge since Baron Rothvogel arrived early, which is why books should not be taken out of the library unless it is necessary for divine reading or work in the scriptorium. Option 1 of 2. Are you still mad at me for borrowing the Chronica Clara? Option 2 of 2 oh, that reminds me, there are a few more books I've been wanting to borrow, Illuminata says you can't be serious. You want more books? I think Prior Ferenc has given you more than enough, Option 1 of 3 I, don't know what you're talking about. Select Thought Bubble to think before responding. Select what? Op op option t option three of three if it's a problem, you should bring it up with Father Jernot or Mother Cecilia. Option three of three if it's a problem, you should bring it up with Father Jernot or Mother Cecilia. Player says what does she want me to say? Ferenc just gives me those books. He hopes I have the same interest in the occult that he does and wants to talk about them. Option 1 of 3 you should just say you don't know what she's talking about. Deny it. Option 2 of 3 then tell her the truth. She knows Ferenc is the one requesting the books. Option 3 of 3 why is she complaining to you about this? That asshole Ferenc is the one borrowing the books. That one. Player says I should tell her to complain to them about it. I don't want to hear it. Maybe she wouldn't take that well, though. Option 1 of 3 I, option 2 of 3, option 3 of 3 if it's a problem. Option 2 of 3 I don't, option 1 of 3 I, don't know what you're talking about. Option 2 of 3 I don't ask for those books. He just gives them to me and asks for my opinion. Illuminata oh, says that's between the two of you. My concern is only for the books. I can't give them out to just anyone. Option 1 of 2 I'm not just anyone. Illuminata says you're right, you're not. You're not a member of this community. The brothers have their vows and vocation to guide their conscience. You could just wander off with half the library if I loaned it to you. Option 1 of 2 I take offense to that. I may love these books but I would not run off with them. Illuminata says my concern for the books does not end at the library door, nor does my responsibility. Please understand that, now, if you'll excuse me. Player says wait, what's all this fuss about Lorenz Rothvogel? Why is Prior Ferenc so nervous? Illuminata says Lorenz. I didn't know you were familiar enough with the man to use his Christian name. Anyway, I haven't dealt with him, personally, but the Prior and Father Abbot have. 
I only know that he's purchased a number of our most valuable manuscripts over the years, and he paid enough to help the Abbey when we needed it. Player says like what? What did he buy? Illuminata says hmm. I can't remember. You know, I have my own responsibilities to attend to, how about this, Andreas? If you help me recover some missing books, I'll tell you what I know about the Baron. Option 1 of 2, of course. I'll help in any way I can. Illuminata says thank you. It's for the good of the Abbey. Player says where should I begin? Illuminata says out there, where you and your cohort have carelessly strewn books around the scriptorium, I will tell you what books I'm looking for. Find them and return them to me. The first books are two volumes of the Aeneid. Reddish covers. 14 inches by 10 inches. 3 inches thick. Option 1 of 2 Innsbruck inches or Nuremberg inches. <sighs> Option 2 of 2 of. I know the ones. They're among Piro's favorites. He keeps them by my desk. Illuminata says they are not his to keep. Player says there's a fair amount of wear on these. I hope you don't mind. Illuminata says those volumes were old even when Piero started to make the copies. Player says how long ago was that? Illuminata says three years. The Aeneid is not one of my favorite stories, but I understand why it appeals to Piero. Illuminata says Aeneas chose his duty to the gods over his lover, Dido. Player says do you think Aeneas sense of duty appeals to Piero? Illuminata says we all have our vocations. Brother Piero takes this more seriously than most of the others in this abbey. Player says you clearly take your chosen vocation seriously. Illuminata says Andreas, I didn't have a choice in my vocation. Few women do. Option 1 of 2 well, surely it's not that dire. Option 2 of 2 you're right, of course. Player says is it really that bad? Is being a woman that limiting? <laughs> Option 1 of 2 she's exaggerating. It's fine. Option 2 of 2 how would you know? Player says true. She knows her life better than I do. Option 1 of 2 well, surely it's not that dumb. Option 2 of 2 you're right, of course. Illuminata says I appreciate that you understand how limited our roles and our choices truly are. Even in stories, we are maidens to be rescued and wed, cruel seducers of men, or wizened crones. Like Dido, we ordinary women are merely tools in the tales of men. We can never be the protagonists of our own stories. No woman is exempt from that, from the empress to a nun. It is our lot. You should see the 21st century then and the social media and how women act right now and how they rule the world. You should see that shit now. Player says I suppose I understand now why you are not fond of the Aeneid. Illuminata says it's fine poetry. For men. Now, the books, if you please. Illuminata. Illuminata says thank you. Next, Wretched Garin. This is a printed copy. Green cover, diamond pattern, I do not have the size in the ledger, but hopefully the description is enough. Player says I know the one you're talking about. Brother Edoc was reading it. Player says the beauty of this book truly belies its ridiculous content. I'm surprised the Abbey owns a copy. Illuminata says we don't. It belongs to Amadi Rusco of Lugano. It's a Venetian edition that's quite valuable. He loaned it to us five years ago. It was subsequently lost and the Abbot has received three letters about it. Player says I've certainly seen the brothers enjoying it. 
Illuminata says that book is not appropriate reading for Benedictine monks. Illuminata says a baby is sold to pirates, raised a servant, then lives a life of adventure wooing princesses and fighting in tournaments. Player says you forgot the best part. In the end, Garen learns he has royal blood, the son of a duke. He reigns as a king and dies a pious hermit. What's not to love? Illuminata says Benedictines should be dreaming of reconciliation with our lord, not, lusty adventures. Option 1 of 2 what's the harm? Option 2 of 2 I suppose you're right. It's better suited for knaves like me. Illuminata says it's not my place to reprimand anyone for reading stories, least of all, you, Andreas. Still, we must be on guard. Fantasy leads to temptation. Temptation has led to the downfall of many men and women. Player says sometimes, yes. But books like this, it's all the same type of fantasy, isn't it? Illuminata says to die better than we are born. Player says and what's the problem with that? Why shouldn't a peasant dream of being a king? Illuminata says there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Player says we may be one in Christ, but we are not equal in this world. Illuminata says it isn't this world you should be concerned with, Andreas. But, the book, Andreas. We must return it. Or would you like the abbot to receive a fourth letter? Option 1 of 2 in truth, it's unlikely you'd be considered liable under Bavarian law. What the fuck are my cats doing, man? I'll kill that. Illuminata says oh, are you a legal scholar now as well as an artist? Option 1 of 2 well, actually, I did study law at university. Illuminata says I don't care. I'm not concerned about the legality of it, but the principle, the book, please. Illuminata. Illuminata says there is only one book left. Then you will be freed from bondage. I never understand why they're making games like this, okay? They, they can easily make a cartoon a TV show, something, okay, five, six, ten episodes, depends how long it is. You lay in your bed and you watch it, man. A dark red cover, eight inches high, five inches across, two inches thick. Option one of two, what is it? Option two of two, oh, I remember that. I believe brother guy was reading it. Player says now that I think about it, Guy has always been guarded about this book, like he was hiding it. Illuminata says very good, please bring it here. Player says what is this, anyway, huh, maybe I should have learned French at some point. What is this? Illuminata says why are you asking so many questions? Just give it to me. Option 1 of 2 why won't you tell me what this book is? Option 2 of 2 I haven't asked so many questions. I've asked one question twice and you haven't answered me. Illuminata says I have good reason to not answer you. Option 1 of 2 yes. Option Illuminata says three French bishops condemned the book. All copies were to be burned. Its author shared the same fate. Player says what? What? Illuminata says I don't know. Andreas. It isn't my place to question the judgment of one bishop, much less three. And before you ask, no, I haven't read it, but I know it contains a dialogue between love and reason. Player says so the book is dangerous, when did the bishops condemn it?
Illuminata says 200 years ago. Player says what? What? Why is it still here? Illuminata says because Father Matthias loved books. All books. He didn't want to see it destroyed. Option 1 of 3 sounds reckless. Illuminata says I would not say I knew the abbot well, but I would not say he was reckless. He believed he was doing the right thing and he was confident inquisitors would never look through Kiersaw's library. It's not my place to question the former abbot's decision, but when Father Jernot learned it was in our possession, he wanted it destroyed. Option 1 of 4 How did Father Jernot even know the book was here? Illuminata says Mother Cecilia made a note of it in the inventory.